What is going on, everybody? My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a through hiker. I am a backpacker. I'm a I'm a huge hiking nerd. And uh, Trail Tales is back. That's right. Every week on this podcast, I chat with other through hikers, other backpackers, other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. And speaking of being back, Baker Bocorny is back. This is another fun episode. We each go through different pieces of bad, terrible, whatever you want to call it, backpacking advice that we've received throughout the years and plenty of of goofs and gags and nuances and actually some pretty insightful things I think came out of this episode. So I hope you enjoy it. Before we get into it real quick, I just want to say now that the show is back, and, and by the way, we have some awesome episodes coming up. I'm so excited for some of the guests we have coming up. So if you're excited too, please, please, please do me a favor. First of all, please leave a five-star review for the show on whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. Maybe that's Spotify. Let's uh, let's get those Spotify five-star reviews up. Maybe it's Apple Podcasts or iTunes. Maybe it's Stitcher, whatever your app is. Please leave a five-star review. I read all of the reviews, and, and I really appreciate them. They help the show. They help bring new listeners into the show. And speaking of bringing new listeners into the show, the other favor I'd like to ask of you is to please share this episode with a friend that you think will enjoy it. Maybe someone who is getting into backpacking, maybe someone who's thinking about through hiking the Appalachian Trail, whatever it is. If you have a friend that you think will enjoy this, shoot them a link and uh, we'll grow this show one friend at a time. So thank you very much, everybody. Let's get into it. Episode number 150. With Baker Bo Corny. All right. Check, check, check. One, two. Can you hear me, Baker? Yes, I can. For now. Can you see me, Baker? Yeah, I can. I'm standing behind you. Just C- kidding. Can you smell me? Uh no. That's right. We're just going to go through the exact joke that we did before the recording started. Um, what's up, everybody? It's for, the, it's for the benefit of the listeners. Yeah. So just when Baker and I got connected before we actually started recording, I basically made that exact same joke. And um, his answers were pretty similar, although you, he could not see me the first time. Now he can, apparently, which is kind of weird because I don't have any cameras on me that I'm aware of. But I don't just, know. I'm right behind you. I'm in your I'm in your house, but just don't worry about it. I wish. How fun would that be if we could actually do these in person? Well, oh, maybe. Oh, uh, we could do one in person, maybe. Actually, that's a good point. Maybe we'll see. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. see. <laughs> we will, in fact, see. Um, all right, everybody. Yeah. So you saw the title. Um, we're going to be doing terrible backpacking advice that we've heard, and that's pretty much the only criteria. Um, we haven't gone through each other's answers yet. And so I don't know. It, mine are all pretty general. I feel like, I don't know, maybe Baker will have some more specific ones. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we get into. It's, it's pretty loose as these ideas a- always are. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to real quick talk about the elephant in the room, the new freaking artwork, dude, Baker, what do you think of the new artwork? I mean, I've seen better. Um, it's not the hype I was hoping for. I mean, to be honest, I don't know. I think the part that I dislike the most, I so saw, here's the thing, like clearly whoever's in the photo, I don't know who that is. Cause it's silhouette. I have no idea who it is. That person. I mean, they're really cool. I like, guess a very attractive person, whoever they are. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm honestly wondering where you even got this photo. Is this attributed? I didn't see any sort of attribution here. Um, I'm hoping whoever, you got this photo from you was compensated, but yeah, just the kind of the plagiaristic <laughs> nature of it is probably my, that's my least favorite part. But, um, I mean, it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful photo. Okay. Yeah. This yeah, it's not quite the hype I was looking for. Um, <laughs> no Baker's joking for everyone listening. Some of you might remember this, but, uh, the, the person in the photo is, is literally Baker. That's not a joke. It that's is actually me. Baker. Um, although, it wasn't like the photo was just taken and then we just uploaded that and that's the artwork. Obviously, there was some some editing and some design that went into it. And to that, I want to attribute uh, Helena Algermissen, this very, very cool uh, German, now living in Austrian lady uh, who is a fan of the show. 
And um, she reached out to me like literally probably six months ago and was like, hey, do you need new artwork? Because it sucks ass, the current <laughs> one. That's not actually what she said, but that's what she said probably more In politely. nicer words. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah, this artwork literally sucks a huge ass. And, um, and then I just kind of was like dropping the ball and procrastinating. But finally, like a, a, a couple weeks ago, I was like, okay, we need new artwork. And Baker had sent me this picture for a previous uh, episode, like cover. And so I was like, this picture is so epic. It's him on uh, McAfee knob on his through hike. It's got the, the holding the pack by the, the pinky bullshit, you know, classic. Yeah. So I was like, that's perfect for the show. And so I sent that picture to Helena and um, she, she made it into an actual cover. So thank you very much, Baker. Thank you very much. Helena, and by the way, please go follow her art page on Instagram. It's oh boy, at Helena Algermisson dot art, and I will have a link to that in the show notes because that's kind of hard to to spell out. So um, go follow her. I really appreciate it. She wouldn't even like accept like an actual like f- like fee either. Like I ended up just giving her a tip and then the shout out. So I'm very grateful. And the new artwork is sick. Um, it is. I, all kidding aside, it's. When I saw that pop up, because you like sent me some drafts ahead of time, um, like what you know, what do you like? And I was like, well, first you asked me, can I use this photo? And I said, yeah, of course. Like how how flattered I am. And then <laughs> when I saw it pop up as the icon or as the photo in my podcast app, I was like, oh, that is it's just like so cool to see. It's by far the the most interesting looking like cover of any of my podcasts. So, oh, that's really um, kind, actually. That's super cool that you I said mean, that. I don't know, like a lot of it's kind of made me like look at more critically at other ones, but I don't know. It's just like, it's just really cool. Like it, it, the words stand out still, but there's still something interesting in the composition. You know, it's not just like the words and, or a logo. I don't know. I think for a hiking podcast, it's, it's pretty rad, right? I oh, mean, yeah. it's definitely compared to just like what you had before. I mean, you guys, you did have a photo, but no, like the no, photo no, was, it was less terrible. prominent. I designed the, the one before like, oh guys, it was terrible. <laughs> it I was actually awful. think that like a silhouette is actually kind of perfect because like details are kind of hard to see like at least like on my phone like it's hard to see the details but when you see the silhouette it's fairly obvious it's a person and then the backpack might be confusing to some people what that is but it's very clearly a person standing in front of us like a sunset or i I think that was sunset i don't know we took sunset and sunrises photos or so i'm trying to remember which one it was but either (laughs) way it's a it it's it stands out and i i like it a lot and i'm obviously very biased for in several ways but it's um it looks sick i i love it no, it's super epic. I'm so happy with how it came out, and like, uh, I'm so stoked. I, I like that it's got McAfee knob in it too. I feel like the AT like Hardos will probably recognize that. Let me pull it up again. Like, you you can kind of tell that it's like McAfee knob, right? If you know it's like in the through hiking context, and if you, especially if you know it's on the AT, then you probably would guess. Yeah, it's a little harder to tell because you've cropped it's, out it's the cropped, right side, which yeah. is where the kind of the like you could see that's where you'd be able to see how far it's extending out but i think yeah i I think probably a lot of people who've been on the at are going to recognize that yeah that's true i guess it is kind of hard to tell because it's cropped because we had a few different versions and like one of the other versions was like zoomed out more so i think you could tell a little bit easier in that one but i liked it more cropped in because it put more like focus on like the the idiot holding the backpack so um yeah i don't know the composition in this one is ideal i think it's epic and it's it like is. it's a little ode to the AT with McAfee knob, and it's just got the most frequent guest literally in the cover, but yeah. like low key in the cover. Like, how perfect is that? Can you yeah, tell I'm apropos. stoked about this, people? Like, oh my god! Maybe we'll just do the whole episode, just complimenting our own artwork, just, just patting ourselves on the back. Like, okay, let's start with the bottom third. Like, now what stands out to you? What kind of feelings do you feel from looking at the? No, we're not going to do that. Um, but it's, it's ethereal. Epic. Are they clouds? Are they mountains? What is it? Oh, it's just, it's just, it's amazing. This is what I'm saying. No, it's awesome. And and by the way, I'm going to try to get, uh, Helena. I really hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Like I said, she's, she's German and she's living in Austria now. Um, so, you know, German isn't my strong suit, but, um, it's H E L E N A. That's Helena, right? Probably. Yeah. Helena. Her last name is Helena. Helena, I don't know. I'm just, I, it's One of my fine. favorite. It's, I think people get the gist. Yeah, my favorite My Chemical Romance song is also called Helena. I Ooh, think. that's a good one. Do you know that's that a song? Banger. 
Oh yeah. So good, dude. What's the worst that I c- Okay, we don't need to do that. Um let's get oh, into no, the- sing it. Let's let's do it. No. It's- <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that we've had singing. Although I guess it was more rapping of Chat GPT lyrics, which yeah. we need to do again sometime. That was hilarious. That was that was super it'd be epic. cool if you got someone who's like actually good at rapping. Like well, that I'll would see. be like someone who it doesn't have to be a professional, just like someone who actually like has some practice doing it. like Flossy, I really don't dude. Flossy can rap pretty well. Oh, yeah. That would be sick. He's pretty Please good. Please do. Um yeah, next Please time do. I'm not gonna see him for a while, unfortunately, but oh that'd be so fun. Anyways, okay, let's get into the actual episode here. So uh it. bad backpacking advice. So it's like you hear people love giving advice, you know, YouTube videos, podcasts, the random creepy old guy you met at the shelter during lunch. Like, you know, there's, there's always people giving advice. Um, people that don't even backpack love to give advice, especially when you tell them you're going on a through hike. So like, you know, we get lots of backpacking advice. A lot of it's good. Most of it's good. Some of it's terrible. And so that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Um, Baker, do you want to start or do you want me to start? I don't want to decide. I'll give it a go. Okay. Give it a go. Give it a, give it a go. What's your first piece of terrible I mean, backpacking advice you've heard? We don't even have to talk about this one, but bring a gun. Like that's the, I feel like that you're talking about people who aren't as familiar with backpacking. Like, no, we need to talk about this. It's not even worth song. discussing. It's, it's, Should we? it's oh, the okay. classic. I feel like that's talked about a lot. Okay. All right. That's okay. It's is it too, it's, is it's it too early to talk about it? Okay. No, no, it's too late. Um, we should have talked about this ages ago, but um, no, it's true. It is. I almost put this on my list, but I didn't, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because you brought it up. Although I kind of feel like we might have some overlap too. We'll see. But it, it is like the classic. Speaking of pe- people that have never through hiked, giving advice like this is the classic one. Like, oh, are you gonna bring a gun? Did Did you ever have like? anyone literally tell you this or is it just like something you know about because everyone no i had i had like i think i had a family member an extended family member maybe not tell me but ask me no maybe someone was advising he was asking like what sort of gun are you going to bring like (laughs) with the you know essentially assuming that i was going to bring one and then asking what sort um and uh yeah i mean which you know i again it's it's not like totally irrational i guess but i think it's kind of just depends on you know, I feel like advice is, it's definitely context specific. It depends on who's giving it and who the recipient, potential recipient is, right? And what their um, knowledge but, of backpacking and through hiking is, obviously. Yeah, because if someone's kind of, if they're, uh, like this person is a hunter, I guess I will say. So like for them, like the out, recreating the outdoors may often involve yeah. carrying firearms, right? Yeah. So it, it's not like totally, totally irrational. But I think it's, you know, I'm trying to remember... I, what I can't remember is if their idea was to use it for probably not for hunting. Cause any hunter knows you can't just walk around randomly and like you, cause there were, there are some people who mentioned like, Oh, are you going to like, I don't know if it's advice, but they're going to ask like, Oh, are you going to collect food or yeah. you gonna hunt animals. Hunt, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not, no, but like a hunter would understand you can't do that generally. Right. Like unless you have like tags and licenses in every state you walk through, like on the AT yeah. and you pass through an area with the right season, whatever, like either way, it's not, <laughs> um, it's not likely it, it's not likely you're actually gonna be able to do that. No, it's not. <laughs> but, but I think maybe their idea was like probably more self protection, I guess, yeah. uh, which is probably maybe the most common reason that that's rec- it's recommended. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are some hikes where, I don't know. Like if you're going to go hike in some area that has a lot of like, I don't know, like a, some sort of violent groups that frequent that area or whatever. <laughs> like, maybe, I don't, I'm if, not if, sure. If... There might be. <laughs> <laughs> if it's so bad that context. you're like, I yeah. can't do this hike without a gun, then maybe you should probably just not do that hike. <laughs> yeah, I think basically, like, I'm not going to say there's absolutely no case in which you shouldn't go hiking without a gun. But for most cases, for most situations that people are, like, considering actually going on, it it, it probably just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I don't no. know. It's so, I mean, it's it's something I never... I, but the thing is, I don't carry a gun in, in normal, like, you know, in non-hiking life. So, like, I guess... Maybe if I did, maybe I would think about it because there definitely are people out there who are like open carrying. Yeah, um, or even it's, more it's like concealed a, carrying. Yeah, that's true. Probably more, even more concealed oh, 100% carrying. So I mean, there are, <laughs> yeah, there are definitely people out there who hike with firearms. So I mean, you know, it, it's I don't think it's it's not like the maybe it's not the most unreasonable advice, but for me, it always felt like, especially in the context of a long yeah hike, um, in an area where I just it's generally going to be very safe and 
you know, it, it, firearms are just probably not the best defense against animals. Maybe, maybe they are in some cases, but it's not like, I think the, the, the ratio of the, or I guess the risk versus reward or like the extra weight versus yeah. how much more protection is going to give you. Just for me, it's not quite there. Yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on this. So first of all, I'm glad that you didn't just like completely shit on the concept because I feel like a lot of through hikers and backpackers, like they just totally scoff at the idea of, of someone suggesting they bring a gun. Um, and, and so just full disclosure, I've never brought a gun backpacking. I don't think I ever will. And so I do think that it's probably completely unnecessary to be clear, but like, I don't know. You just got to think about the perspective of someone who's not a hiking nerd. Like we are for them. They hear, Oh, especially for a long through hike. Oh, you're going to go walk through the woods for five months. Like, of course you're going to want protection for like with a gun. That sounds dangerous. So like, I do think it's just reasonable to like keep that perspective. Um, that being said, I do have a lot of thoughts on this. Um, I actually want to make a video about this. Like, should you bring a gun through hiking? But I'm just afraid that it's just going to be a, a yeah, shit show. Yeah, it could show. be a tricky, yeah. It could oh, be, yeah. It could be it's a just gonna inflammatory be, subject. It's like, it's just going to be like fucking people arguing. It's going to, YouTube probably will not like it either. Like the YouTube has True. weird rules about like firearm content and stuff. So like, yeah. I don't know if I'll do it, but I would like to, because I feel like I have some good thoughts on it. Cause I'm not, you know, I don't want to get political. Um, but like personally, like I kind of like guns, like I own guns. Like I, I'm not like a crazy, like gun nut person, but like I like guns and shit. Um, and so I feel like I have a good perspective on the topic of guns, bringing them backpacking and through hiking because, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the time it's just people that are just like against guns at all, like in any circumstance. So they're like, of course you shouldn't bring one backpacking. Um, but then there's also the people that are just like really into guns and they're like, you're crazy not to go back or to go backpacking without a gun. And I feel like I kind of have a good perspective in the middle. I'm like, I like guns. I see the use of guns, but also I don't think you need one backpacking. So I just feel like I'd be a good person to make that video, but I don't think it's going to yeah. happen. It would be, it'd be, <laughs> it'd be a shit show in the comments. It'd be like, on one hand, it'd be like people that are, that are pro gun would be like, Oh, like you're going to get people killed. Like telling people not to bring a gun, you piece of shit. And then on the other hand, it'd be like other people when they hear me say that I own guns, they'd be like, Oh, like you fucking all right piece of shit. Like it'd just be like, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Just, it would just be terrible. It, would, it, would, it unfortunately <laughs> wouldn't be probably wouldn't be a productive conversation. Like most, like, like any sort of controversial topic on YouTube, like the comments are going to become totally unproductive. Even if you're trying to have like an interesting nuanced discussion about it, like the internet unfortunately doesn't produce very yeah. good conversations generally no, it when, doesn't. If, with controversial subjects, even if they're worth talking about in an interesting way, like it just doesn't, it doesn't produce, unfortunately it doesn't produce a uh, good conversation. No, it doesn't. So. I feel like this podcast is a little bit better because first of all, there's less people than a YouTube video that are going to hear it, but also just, I feel like the audience is a little more, a little more mature <laughs> to listen to the show. And it's also like a long form conversation. So I don't know, but it's like the only circumstance where I can really see it making sense to bring a gun backpacking is if you already kind of like you alluded to this a little bit earlier, Baker, it's like you already conceal carry on the regular just in like everyday life, which there are a lot of people that do this for those that don't know. Um, those, those of you that know, you know, but like for those that don't know, I didn't really know this for a long time either, but like, I mean, it depends a little bit on where you are, but like there's a lot of people that could seal carry way more than a lot of people realize. And so if you're one of those people, um, then, you know, if you bring it anywhere or most places anyways, then I guess it doesn't really make sense to leave it at home specifically when you're backpacking. But if you don't conceal carry normally, then I don't think that you need to bring it specifically because you're backpacking. Um, so th yeah, I don't know. That's that kind of that's kind of my thought. Um, and then the other, the last thought on this too. Sorry, I told you I had a lot of thoughts. Is um, if you're doing a long through hike, it's pretty damn impractical, and it's also illegal because you're going through so many different that's states. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. yeah, it's like cause like on the AT especially, it's like you start in Georgia, <laughs> anyone can carry a gun in Georgia without a permit, so you're fine there. And then you get into North Carolina, you need a permit there. And in North Carolina honors some states' permits, but not other states, and same with Virginia. 
And then it's like you get up into the the Northeast, like going through New York, it's very illegal. And then you cross into Vermont a couple states later, and once again, you can carry without a permit. So it's just like there's tons of different rules, um, especially on the PCT too. It's like good luck legally carrying a gun in California. So it's like I don't know. It just doesn't make sense logistically on on a long through hike. Um, even if you are someone who carries on the regular, it's very unlikely that it's going to make sense. You're either going to have to break laws or just not do it basically. <laughs> so don't right. probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That makes sense. Anyway, no, I think, I think you are a great person to, to talk about. You probably, it probably could be a good video. Like your content of it would probably be interesting, but like you said, just the, the shit storm. It would yeah, create exactly. Would, it'd just be kind of brutal and probably associating yourself with that on YouTube's algorithm is probably not, as long, as long as it's not your hill to die on, it's probably not worth like putting, yeah, getting no the algorithms association with you for with that kind of content. No, no, it, it wouldn't be good. Um, I've thought about this a lot, to be honest. That's you could probably tell. Like I've, I've kind of thought through the video, um, a lot, but I just, I know, I know Dixie made one a few years ago, but that was like four or five years ago, I think, and things have changed with the algorithm. But anyways, yeah. um, next piece of bad, terrible, whatever backpacking advice that I hear all the time is never hike alone. Never, never do it. And I have a lot of thoughts on this as well. Um, But you, you hear people say this, like it's totally unsafe. I've especially been getting comments of people saying this and I kind of understand on my like more recent videos, like the mystery videos and stuff. Cause like a lot of these <laughs> yeah. stories, it is people that were solo hiking that got into trouble. But, and so like, I understand why people that aren't really into backpacking that much would say this, but like, they don't understand that on, in almost every single one of these scenarios, there's something else that went wrong that caused whatever bad thing that happened to happen. It wasn't just because they were hiking alone. Although it is also worth mentioning. I'll say that, I guess, yeah, it is definitely a higher risk thing to do alone, but I don't think that it's just reckless like a lot of people seem to think. Have you have you heard people say this? Give this advice. Yeah. Never hike alone. You've heard that? No, yeah. And I that it actually like I think in certain contexts it's maybe it's maybe not bad advice, but to say never, like it's kind of a it it there's there's always nuance with these kinds of things. Yeah, right? exactly, I don't know if any exactly. of this advice I don't know if any of this advice I have is actually like always wrong in every situation yeah. but to say never makes sense like okay this like for, i know there's people who would say like okay don't don't go on a like don't hike the at by yourself whatever that's ridiculous like if you're gonna start like the at by yourself you're not actually you're, you're never gonna hike the at by yourself unless it's like yeah. you hike in the dead of winter or something like you're not actually alone out there so in terms of like the safety part of it like yeah there there might be stretches where you are more by yourself but there's so many people out there you know it's and so I, I, it's to say you're like actually alone that you're truly like, no, you can't rely on anyone else for help. If something happens, it's definitely not true. Like if you get off trail for some reason to a place where no one is going to come near, you know, no one's going to find you if you were to get hurt, then yeah, potentially. But I mean, if you can stick near the trail or near the shelters or whatever, like someone's going to come along and, and find you and they should be able to, to help you out. But you know, there are times when you are going to be alone potentially. So I guess, you know, there's, I guess there are times when, it, it, that could be a problem, but yeah. I agree. In general, no, like to say never, never hike alone is like, nah, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's good that we're providing some of this nuance because you're, you're so right. Like most of these pieces of advice, like there's definitely like more to them. So this is actually good um, that we're kind of breaking them down like this and playing devil's advocate a little bit. Cause like, you're so right. Like, yeah, if you're going to go hike the AT and someone's like, you should never do that alone. And you're leaving on April 2nd, like you're, going to be fine you're not really going to be hiking alone but if you're like oh yeah i'm going to go hike into the alaskan wilderness by myself in uh yeah. february it's like yeah maybe maybe don't do that at all first of all but if you're going to do it maybe definitely don't do that alone so it is a little bit yeah. more complicated and another um another point about this one i want to bring up which it's not really my place to say this but just the general understanding i've gotten um from talking to people as well as reading comments on my uh, YouTube videos is that it seems like this advice is maybe given a little bit more often to women specifically like women yeah. shouldn't hike alone. 
which again, I'm not a, a woman, so I guess that's not really my place to say, but all I'll say is, and I'm sure you would concur with this Baker. It's like, I've seen plenty of solo female backpackers and through hikers and they seem to be doing just fine. So I wouldn't let that discourage you ladies. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. It's super common. I mean, I feel like, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but in my experience, it felt like it was almost a 50, 50 ratio of men to women when I was on the, like on the AT and tons of women were, were going solo. Cause again, like you're, you're not actually like completely alone. Generally, like at least in the AT or even the PCT, you certainly, if you started northbound, like in the spring, there's no way you're actually going to be alone out there. So exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Next piece of, of bad backpacking advice, Baker, what you, or through hiking, whatever advice, what, what you got. Okay. We had this from kind of a few, this is an experience Jessica and I had, and you, I'm sure you did too, because you started AT around the same time, but we both got this in different contexts, but basically advice around now, you you aren't going to be able to finish the AT in five months. Like when we were starting, we had a later than traditional start, I guess you could say, go for northbound, right? Um, in in May, which you had the same thing. You had like mid-May. And so, um, yeah, like we had a lot of people, we had people beforehand, we had people on the trail. Like we'd be like in Pennsylvania and they're like, oh, you should flip. You're not going to make it <laughs> to Katahdin by October 1st. So we had that, we had like, we literally had someone at a road crossing who was just, just straight up like, you're not going to make it. Um, and we're like, we're definitely on track to make it. Like I have a, I could show you my spreadsheet. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I've, right. I've crunched all the numbers. Oh, I'm this like, makes me angry. Ah, oh. yeah. Yeah. So this was like, a, and then I also had a thing where after we finished, um, my dad told me that he had a conversation with someone at an outdoor gear store and he was just, you know, kind of shooting the shit with the person who worked there. And he mentioned that, oh, my son's going to start the AT, you know, uh, later this year and they're going northbound and the guy's like, he's going to start in May and he'll, he'll never make it. You know, and he didn't tell me until after we had finished that he had gotten this bad advice. So, you know, I, kudos to my dad. Like he didn't pass that along or he, that didn't kind of, um, you know, make him feel like he felt fearful and he should, you know, relay that advice to me. Like he kind of just, he, he was trusted like, oh. you. like, yeah, he was like, they, they're going to do what they, what they want to do. So yeah, to say that like, you can't do it in five months. I mean, I think where this is coming from is people who, I think the biggest thing is probably people who um, hike, they just hi don't hike as many miles in a day or they just aren't used to doing that, which means probably they're not like carrying as ultralight of gear or honestly, they could be like older. And so like when they were, you know, starting out hiking, like there wasn't lighter gear and maybe it, maybe it was a lot less likely for someone to be able to hike something in, hike the trail in five months. Or they also didn't have like as great of access to like, resources ahead of time there weren't as many trail angels there weren't as many like um you know like uh like hostels and other types of resources for hikers there weren't as like as many uh, you know advice videos before you start the at that like basically give you tons of great advice so you can avoid like tons of the, the common mistakes that might slow you down mm -hmm. um so i don't even know like i can see how maybe maybe at you know a different period of time like earlier i mean maybe like 20 years ago yeah, maybe it was really unlikely for someone to be able to do it in five months unless you're like kind of a, a particularly fit person or you're like particularly determined. But I think now that, I mean, to me, there was plenty of people who finished like in five months. You finished in way less. We finished like in four months, three weeks. You you obviously finished probably in four months and four and a half months. Um, yeah, My roughly. friend Joe finished in like four months flat. Like it's, in, and none of us are super athletes, right? Like it's, it's yeah. totally doable. I, I, I would, so. I would describe myself as a super athlete, but you guys okay. definitely know. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I saw, yeah. I mean, you are a professional <laughs> hiker, but the rest of us, the rest of us, you know, muggles that are uh, just out there giving it our best shot. <laughs> but yeah, I think that it, I can see where that advice is coming from. But I mean, I think just also when people, like people who just like tell you, just like, oh, you're never going to be able to do that. Unless it's like something that's, that's like truly dangerous. Like, oh, I'm going to go do this thing. And like, that's just like straight up a bad idea. Like it's truly dangerous. To say like, oh, I'm going to try to do it in five months. It's not dangerous. At some point, like the weather will just be too cold. And you're like, okay, this just isn't going to happen. And you're going to flip or you're going to get off trail. Like, you're going to figure it out, right? Yeah, But to exactly. have someone just poo-poo your idea because they're kind of just projecting their hiking style into your hiking style. And they may not understand that you're no, able they to don't. crank they out don't. a lot more miles and it'll be just be more con just do a higher pace than they're just like they've never seen that and never done that before so i think that's kind of where it's coming from but i, I it's almost like i don't know just why it's give that silly. advice like I don't yeah know. 
I I never got it really on the AT. Although it's kind of funny. I think I said this in episode number one with Indy, like way back when. But I was like expecting it when I was on the AT. And so I, I had yeah. a whole plan. I was going to like, <laughs> if, if someone safe. said I wasn't going to make it in time, I was going to get their email address. And then I was going to take a picture on Mount Katahdin, flipping them off and then send it to them after Damn. I finished. But I never, I never really got anybody that doubted me. Um, but I know Indy did. He talked about it in that episode and like you guys got it a little bit, obviously. And then I don't know. I don't know why I didn't on the AT, but on the PCT, I did a little bit. I never had anyone that was straight up just like, Oh, like you're not going to make it in time. Um, because just for reference, everyone, I started on May 15th on the PCT. Um, but I did have a few people early on that were like, oh, it's kind of a late start date, don't you think? And maybe to their credit, they were right because we ended up getting, you know, the fire closures yeah. and stuff. But I will True. say we were on pace. If we hadn't had to deal with the closures, we were on pace to be able to finish before winter on the PCT. But um, I don't know. I think that a lot of this, a lot of people that, that say this, it, they're just like a little bit naive. Like they don't quite understand um, that some people can hike faster. And I will say though, it's not like just your average Joe can start in May, in mid May, especially, and have a high chance of succeeding. I think that if you're going to do a May start date, it's a hundred percent possible clearly, but, um, you, you do have to be a little bit more disciplined, I'll say. And I think you'll be much better off if you, start the trail in shape too so like i don't know there's the nuance i guess on this one it's like it is harder to do a may start date for sure and you have to be yeah, more it prepared is. but it is completely possible and the people that say it's not are just they just don't know basically they the, the two people they know that if they're hiked started in march or april and so then they hear may and they're like oh my god you're never gonna make it so yeah it's it's silly for sure yeah, and I think you're right. The margin of error is a lot lower, right? Like, so if you have to get off trail for a month for any reason, like that's you're in real deep trouble. Like being able to continue northbound. If you start like in end of February, if you have to get off trail for a month. Like you're you still got like six oh, yeah. months of hiking time, you know. So I mean, to be to be fair, like it is a lower, I think it is a lower chance of success, a lower margin of error, um, and I do think you need to be a little more prepared, right? Like I think if you coming if you are spending the whole first month like shedding all of your super heavy gear that you realize like this is not appropriate this is not maybe the most optimal gear for like the high pace that i have to sustain for five months then yeah that's that's going to slow you down too so i think yeah physical either physical preparedness or gear preparedness or even just like you know having some backpacking experience so that you aren't like figuring like what shoes do i need to wear what shoes do not give me blisters you know like if you aren't if you aren't spending the whole first month or two figuring that stuff out, then that's going to increase your chance of success. So for people who are just showing up and like really haven't planned it out as much as some people, then yeah, maybe five months is a little less realistic. But yeah, to say it's not to say you, you shouldn't even attempt it, that's ridiculous. Like it's totally or that you're never going to make it. Dumb. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Totally um, all right. So this next piece of advice is kind of related to something we were just talking about there. And this piece of advice, you hear people give this advice you also hear people give the contrary so it's not like this is a common piece of advice that people are giving all the time but anyway so this piece of advice is that you don't need to train before a through hike and that you can just hike yourself into shape when starting your through hike and so there's a lot of new nuance with this one first of all that that is true you can do that and a lot of people do that and they're fine so i'm not saying you can never do this um but I don't I don't think it's good advice. I don't think it's good advice to say like, oh, don't train, just get out there and just ramp up the miles and hike yourself into shape when you're actually out there. I, I think kind of going back to what we were just talking about a little bit, I think you're better off, even if you have a early start date, um, certainly if you have a later start date, but even if you have an earlier start date, I still think you're gonna it's gonna be beneficial to train before your through hike. I don't think you should just go out there right from the couch. You know, what do you think about this one? Baker, the piece of advice that you don't need to train. You can just hike yourself into shape at the start of your through hike. Oh man. I don't know that this one, I actually don't know that it's like as critical of advice or just to say that you can do it from the couch. I actually think that's basically, I don't think it's bad advice actually. Well, um, I think, I, I, I think it's true, but I don't think it's, yeah. the, I don't think it's good advice though. If that makes sense. Uh, 
I mean, I guess, yeah, I would say like the, uh, the optimal situation is that you do like you do some preparation ahead of time, but I honestly, I'm, I'm not sure how critical it is. Like, obviously I don't, this is a sample size of like just a few people, but if you compare Jessica and I going into the AT or even the floor trail, like when I started the floor trail before the AT, I spent a couple months like hiking around, you know, p parks in Florida, or even just literally walking on sidewalks around the city I lived in in Florida with a backpack on like a total weirdo. But I was like, I just, just got used to walking in any situation with weight on. Um, I did that for, you know, probably a month or two. Then I did the floor trail. So I was like two months of like actual hiking. Now it wasn't like elevation gain and loss, but it was like hiking on trails and tons of walking right every day yeah. uh, with weight on. And then going into the AT, I got an injury like quite early on. Now this you could you could say that that was too much because a thousand miles is not really a warm up. That's like a full on trail. But either way, like I felt very good going into the AT. I felt very warmed up. My body did not feel like very broken down yet. Um, maybe it was more broken down than I realized. But I got an injury like pretty early on. Contrast that with Jessica. She was like finishing up pharmacy school. She wasn't doing any sort of hiking, any sort of preparation. She was basically just cramming everything. You know, it's like super busy. The your last year, end of the semester. Um, so she was just like basically not really able to do. I mean, maybe she was doing some exercise, but it wasn't anything like the kind of hiking specific preparation that I had done. And she didn't get a single like major injury. Like I, you know, I had to skip like ten days. I I missed the Smokies. She didn't have anything like that. So. I don't know. I, I think, I guess like in general, I think, yes, it's, if you can prepare, it's definitely helpful, but I do feel like there's a lot of, there's some other tactics you can take. Like I think like going, um, like it, you can definitely hike yourself into shape, especially if you start slow. I think that increases your odds too, but then there's people who don't, they don't, they go from zero to a hundred and they're, they get no injuries too. I feel like there's a large yeah, kind of I don't or know genetic component, component to like, I don't There's know. I feel like, I mean, there is, but I think you hear all the time about people who start too fast and then get injured. You know, I feel like there's yeah, way no, more of those people than people who just start yeah. at zero, just start ripping twenties and then are just completely fine. And I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's definitely the exception. It is. It is the exception. So, I mean, I think it's pretty good advice, um, but I don't know if I could say it's bad advice to say you, you can hike yourself into shape because I actually do think you can, but I do think you need to expect to have to hike much slower, like shorter days, you know, in the beginning is probably the most, if you're trying to increase your chance of success that they've actually been able to hike yourself into shape, then starting slower is going to, you know, it's going to be probably more, more necessary. And then you have to, you have increased time out there. Your hike's going to take longer. It's going to cost more. You have to deal with a lot. You have to resist the temptation to keep hiking further, which I feel like that's a huge that's a difficult thing for people. They're so excited when they get out there. They don't want to hike like 10 or less miles a day and just hang out for like, you know, three quarters of the day. It doesn't take very long to hike 10 miles. And that's the only thing you have to do in a day, even if you're not in great shape. But I don't know. I don't, I guess, yeah, I, this is not something I would put on my list of saying it's bad advice that you can hike yourself into shape. But I agree the ideal, if I'm going to tell someone what to do, I'm going to say, prepare as much as you can and then also hike slowly at the beginning i would say do both oh yeah i would really try to increase your sure. odds of success so. yeah for sure um definitely do both but here's why i think it's bad advice and again it is totally possible i don't think it's bad advice because it's impossible um lots of people do it uh clearly but the reason i think it's bad advice is because if you're going to be going into a through hike you're probably going to be making a lot of sacrifices uh, you know financially um, you're going to be spending a lot of money to do it. You might be quitting your job. Most people are probably going to be either quitting a job or in between jobs, something like that. You're going to be away from your family and friends for a long period of time. There's a lot of sacrifice. And so I just feel like if you're going to make all that sacrifice, you might as well set yourself up for success as best as you possibly can. And I don't think that hiking, that not doing any training beforehand and then trying to hike yourself into shape when you get out there and just totally depending on that. I just don't think that's setting yourself up for the best chance of success that you could possibly have. Um, and that's why I think you should try to train a little bit. And, and it doesn't have to be anything crazy, to be clear. I'm not saying you have to be spending 40 hours a week in the gym or hiring a personal trainer. Um, I just think you should do something, certainly. If you can hike a little bit, if you're the area that you live in allows you to do that, that's great. If you can carry your backpack, go do some shakedown hikes. 
Um, if you can do some strength training at the gym, you know, for your legs and stuff, I think that would be beneficial. And I don't know. It's just like, just set yourself up for success as best as you can. Now, the nuance to this one, I think, besides the fact that it is possible certainly to hike yourself into shape, is you don't want to train too hard and then injure yourself before you even start. Yes. That is something yeah. that you need to keep in mind because I could see someone kind of like how when people start their through hike, they're like really excited and eager at the beginning. And so they just go way too hard and then get an injury. I could see somebody doing the same thing with their training. Like they start training like a couple months beforehand and they're super excited and motivated. And so they just go way too hard and then hurt themselves. And so you do have to be careful about it too. Um, so there's there's a lot of nuance there, but I don't know. I think people should try train before they're yeah, through hikes. I, think I generally agree with that. Yeah. But the, uh, also, I guess one more thing I'll, I'll say though, um, kind of just to go back on that a little bit is like kind of like Jessica's um, circumstances. It sounds like I don't think that you should not through hike if you didn't have time to train. I'll say or the means yeah, to train. Yeah, definitely. I okay. That, definitely. I think that's. I'm glad I got that in there. Actually, I was about to move on. It's like it's not a it's not a requirement i just think that if you can you absolutely should i guess is the best yeah. way to put it um, yeah i would agree with that but don't let it discourage you if you can't okay what's the next what's the next piece of terrible trash just the worst advice you've ever heard i'm trying to talk like i'm a youtube title um what's what's the next one baker yeah that's like narrated clickbait right there that's pretty good oh yeah um, Wait till you see. see the title for this podcast episode. Oh boy, it's gonna have lots of words capitalized. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the terrible advice. You'll okay, not so believe next... number six on the list. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no. Okay, next one is through hiking with a romantic partner will stress your relationship, or I don't know if stress is the word, but like it'll have some sort of negative, adverse effect. Um, on your relationship. Like, it's not going to improve it or whatever. Well, I don't Interesting. Know. Like, this is I don't a know good if you one. Heard, if you've ever heard anyone talk about, I feel like I definitely, I don't know where I heard this from, but definitely people, and some maybe some of it was hikers, some people were probably lots of non-hikers because I wasn't talking to lots of hikers before the hike, but definitely lots of things like, oh, well, if you can survive that, you can survive anything. Like those kinds of things, as yeah, if like, this would be the most before, difficult. For sure. The, this will be the most difficult thing you you will ever go through in a relationship with a romantic partner, which I d d I definitely do not like. That's doesn't that's not true in my experience at all. Like, I I don't think so. At least like, I think basically like, really this one just kind of because I I I know people who have done lot like who romantic part romantic partners who've done lots of like tons t thousands of miles together hiking, but then they've broken up afterwards like in real life you know yeah, what i mean so like yeah and like people who knew they were who were together before the trail like uh, people who like triple crowned even and then like then they've broken up after that so i don't know maybe the hiking was related to that but they didn't hike they didn't break up during the hike you know they made it like through a triple crown so obviously like there was something they, they had a pretty strong relationship to it must have had some kind of like strong relationship through that but basically i guess yeah this is just like if you're worried about, oh, I can't hike with my significant other because it's going to, we're just going to destroy our relationship. Like we're going to break up over like that's total nonsense in my, in my opinion. And maybe it really comes down to like how well you communicate with your partner in general, but that's just like, that's, that's true in real life too. Like you, you know, there's probably other types of tests. Like if you have children or if you go through some sort of medical or financial troubles, like, oh, that's going to destroy your relationship. And like, I guess in general, it's just like hardships and, you know, hard situations in general can cause problems in a relationship. But I don't know for Jessica. And this is maybe just, this is obviously like a, I don't know, sample bias or whatever it is of, you know, I've only done it with one romantic partner, but it didn't stress us out at all. I mean, I guess there's, there's some aspects of it that could um, make it more stressful. Like if you, I don't know, like if you don't like being in close quarters with your partner, like if you're sharing a shelter and you don't like sleeping in a tent next to them every <laughs> night, but like that's, it just feels like that's most romantic relationships involve sleeping in the same probably bed. Doomed, least, no matter what you're doing. You, yeah. That, that's what I mean. Like, I don't know that. I don't know that hiking is like necessarily the, I don't know the issue there, but I mean, I guess there, another part of it could be like there, you do end up getting a lot of decision fatigue. Um, like you kind of just have to make tons of, 
you're making a lot of decisions like every day when you're out there and there's a lot of uncertainty sometimes. And I guess there aren't even that many like decisions, but you do have to basically every day, you're going to go through a whole series of decisions and you have to make those same decisions like every single day. Like how far are we going to go? Where are we going to camp? What stops are we going to take? How fast are we going to go? Which some of those, I guess, if you aren't going to camp with each other, then I guess maybe a lot of those don't even, aren't even a thing. But, you know, you do have to, I'm sure that this is something you you experience even just hiking with a group of people, but you have, you have to coordinate and decide like, this is where, this is where we're going to get off. We're going to stay in town. How long are we going to stay in town? You know, how far are we going to go today? Like you, those, you make those decisions like all the time with groups of people, but I guess with a significant other, maybe there's a pressure of like, you only have one shelter between the two of you. So you kind of have to, you have to come to an agreement. Whereas with like a trail family, you could just literally be like, I'm going to not hang. I'm not going to sleep in the same place as them tonight. Yeah. I'm not going to camp in the same place. And that's, that's a possibility. Maybe, I don't know either way. Like this, this was not to me. It, I don't know. It was like, it felt easy to us out there. Like it, it was just like, you know, you're just walking in the woods all day. You're cruising. So there's like you, you, a lot of the normal stresses that kind of everyday life throw at you often, you just like, don't even have them. Um, so right. I, I guess there's other, another potentially challenging situation, which Jessica and I did run into is one, one partner is injured and, or wants to just hike faster in general, has a different hiking style. I guess that's probably, that, that could be a big thing. If you're hiking with someone who you do, your hiking styles really don't align, then that could really like be a, basically a huge wrench in it. And in that case, maybe it really is best that you don't try to hike every single day with a significant other that maybe it is best to hike like separate hikes. Essentially, if your hiking styles are so distinct and ours were basically almost exactly the same in terms of like how far we could go every day in our pace and everything. So maybe, right. yeah. So maybe there are some situations, but to, to, to basically say that it's going to be the most difficult thing you've ever been, been through. And there's a great chance that you're going to end up breaking up before the end of it. Like that's, uh, then that's some of the advice I had heard beforehand. Like, that's just like, nah, I don't totally don't, don't agree with that. No, uh, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense to me. I think that's kind of silly. Um, yeah, I, I have some thoughts on this one too. So Baker, when your mother and I threw hike together, we um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I actually don't have that many that many uh, thoughts on hiking with a romantic partner because I I haven't really done a, a long through hike. I've only done like a couple nights with a uh, with a romantic partner, and so like, yeah, I don't I don't know, but that does make sense. And I will say this is totally anecdotal, but just something you said at the beginning of this point was when you were kind of talking about where you hear this piece of advice from and you felt like it was more so maybe non hikers, but I feel like I've actually heard it quite a bit from hikers. Like I've heard it from both. Yeah. But I think before the trail it was probably not, it was like maybe family members and maybe they were half joking. Like, I don't really know, but yeah, I'm trying to think once I was on trail, like we were out there doing it. So I don't know that people were like advising us to not do it because we <laughs> yeah, were already doing, were, you know, oh, so you better get off trail so you don't break up. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I don't, maybe it was just like the context of like, we were already out there together. So no one was going to say that to us or maybe, yeah, yeah I maybe thought don't about want saying to be it to rude. you a couple times. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you were like, you just saw, even you though just you heard were the, in the Maine shouting Maine matches, <laughs> shouting matches in the tent, like every single night, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, it, I guess it just it probably depends on the individual couple too, you know. Like Yeah, I I think it does. Especially cuz a lot of couples in styles. in the through hiking world, they meet from through hiking. In fact, I've yeah. I've seen the opposite. I feel like where a couple meets on trail and they start dating on trail and then once they get off trail, that's when they break up, you know. Yep. Like that's an Yeah, interesting that actually one too. sounds more like I actually would agree with that. That's cuz like a hiking hiking is such a different situation than the the, the, the non-hiking world, like a not, you know, life is very different in the context of a through hike or a long hike than it is outside of a long hike. So I would agree that may not be the best situation to find. So I'm not saying that it can't work. It obviously totally does, but I could see that being a more difficult transition of like, you know, this is, we're going to go from, we met on trail and then we're going to go into kind of regular life and be a couple. Whereas if you're in a hike, you met, you know, if you're with someone before a hike and then if so, if things fall apart on the hike, you just, you know, someone quits the hike, you either both quit or you don't, or you just adjust it or whatever it is. But when you go back to regular life, assuming things were okay before then, then things probably, you know, could go, go back to being fine after the hike. If, um, you know, if, if it was a hiking specific problem, I do I actually do think that if you have different hiking styles than a partner, than a romantic partner, that, that might be very difficult. Like that's true of anyone you're going to hike with. Even if you, you and your best friend are going to like go through hike if you have different hiking styles, that's going to be, that could be very difficult. Especially if you want to, either one has very particular like goals 
on how you want to hike or you have a very particular experience you're looking for. And if having to change your hiking style kind of gets in the way of that, um, I could see that being pretty stressful on a relationship, whether yeah. like romantic or significant other or not. Yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting one for sure. Let, let us know your thoughts, everybody. I'm calling. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually Baker, if you could leave your number right now so people could call you actually, that'd be, that'd be preferable. Yeah. It's yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bye. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Call in everybody. All right. Next piece of advice. So this one, uh, I, I don't really have any evidence for this one, for my thoughts on this one. Uh, or I, it's not that I don't really, I don't have, I don't have any evidence for this. I haven't done any research. Um, so take this with a grain of salt, but you, sometimes you hear the advice that you sleep warmer if you sleep naked, like in your sleeping bag. And intuitively, I just feel like this is fucking horseshit. Like, I feel like there's no way that's true. <laughs> Where have you heard that? You've never heard this one before? No. Oh, dude, I hear this all the time. Maybe it's because I have like YouTube comments and stuff and I talk about, I've made videos about Yeah, like, you probably warm. get a, all kinds of bad advice just being a... <laughs> yeah, uh, dude. Like, I don't think I get tons of bad advice, but you're probably just subject to like every random bad ad- advice oh, yeah. giver out there. Uh, big time. But anyway, so I, I feel like I've heard this before. And I, other people have too. My girlfriend was talking about this recently. She, she, I feel like you hear the advice sometimes like, oh, like if you sleep naked in your sleeping bag, you'll sleep warmer than if you have clothes on. And once again, Baker, um, you know, I guess the only time I have any experience with this was when, you know, I was backpacking with your mother. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Mrs. Bo She Corny. listens to this. Oh, yeah, God, she listens really? to this. Oh, I should have oh, yeah. that before I made those jokes. Well, too bad. No, it's you got to leave them in there. Uh, I'm surprised you. I'm surprised you're the one that's like, no, you gotta leave those jokes about sleeping with my mom. And no, just kidding. Um, no, Kyle, I want, I want you to know. I want the world to know what oh, you've said. I'm just kidding. A she, lot of moms listen to this. My mom listens. Oh, my girlfriend's mom listens. Oh god, this is. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, oh boy. It's Kyle. all goofs. It's all goofs. Everybody. It's all in jest. Oh boy. Um, sorry, moms. Anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> let's see. So it's going back to sleeping naked keeps you warmer i feel like this is bs but i do there are people that say this and and maybe there's some evidence for this like i said i don't know i haven't conducted a study but um i feel like this is nonsense because intuitively it just seems like if you have more stuff on you're going to be warmer obviously so i don't know maybe it's like if you fill up the space of your sleeping bag too much then like there's not enough room for like hot air to like insulate that's the only logic uh, I can think of, maybe. But it just seems like maybe there's like a point where if you put on too much stuff, it gets to a point where you'll start to lose heat. But I feel like, for the most part, wearing stuff. I'm surprised you haven't heard this one. Am I the only one I'm, here? I feel like I've I can't never heard that. I don't, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't think I've ever heard that. And that this just in my experience is that that's it's like absolutely no way that's true. Like, okay. I mean, I I just it it just isn't. Like I've had times when it's so warm out that I'm like taking layers off in my sleeping yeah, bag. Yeah, exactly. It's too, if I was wearing, it's like, it's not like I'm going to put more clothes on because it's too hot in my sleeping bag and therefore more clothes makes you cold. Like this isn't, it just doesn't, the only, the only, yeah, I don't, this doesn't make sense to me. The only exception I can think of is me. Yeah. Like you said, too many clothes, it re- like pushes on the, your, your sleeping bag. So it reduces the insulation, the amount of insulation, or it compresses the insulation more, but like, what kind of clothing are you wearing that's like so bulky that it's like pushing I on know. your sleeping bag? I don't, that or, doesn't make sense. Or you need a bigger sleeping bag. So I found an article yeah. from Outside Magazine. It says, is it true that it's warmer to sleep naked? I've recently been in some heated discussions with fellow campers over whether it's warmer to sleep naked in a sleeping bag or to wear some loose clothes. Logic would seem to suggest that more layers equals more insulation, but a surprising number of acquaintances swear they are warmer naked. So see... And then the first sentence, so that's like the uh, the headline and like the subheadline. The first sentence of the article says, of course I can give you a definitive answer. The idea that sleeping naked will make you warmer is ridiculous. So I feel like I'm yeah. vindicated from this one article. Yeah. The only, and they kind of alluded to it there. The only thing I could think is that like if your clothing is tight, like people who are like really tight socks, that can make your feet colder because it reduces, like in theory, it would reduce the amount of blood flow. Yeah. Um, I've heard that before, and like I, 
kind of have that. I, I don't know if I've had that experience. I don't really have socks that are so tight that I think it's restricting blood flow. But I guess if you wore like compression socks to bed or something, mm-hmm. maybe that wouldn't be ideal for for warmth. But I I don't know this. Th- yeah, this doesn't hold any water in my opinion. Yeah, that's super silly. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah. Okay. Um, what's your next piece of bad advice, Baker? Okay. I don't know if this is bad advice. Like for me, I actually kind of agree with this, but Jessica specifically said that this was bad advice <laughs> okay. for her. This whole, so that's, so, I think that's actually, so, that's so you guys, by the way, for you to say something be like, yeah, I don't really feel strongly about this, but Jessica is very insistent on this. Like that's, that's so perfect. <laughs> that's just yeah, the I essence know, of your relationship. I feel like <laughs> it, it is. We definitely, we align on a lot of things, but there's definitely some things that we're like, it's not even that you on. disagree. It's just more that like Jessica feels way more strongly about it than you do. I love that. <laughs> that's true. She does. When she has an opinion or a belief, it definitely is. It's generally more strongly held than, than mine. Like, yeah, I, that's I would funny. That, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Okay, so her this is something she specifically mentioned, and I know that I think for I actually think you would might agree with this okay. being bad advice as well, but maybe not. We'll see. But the idea of slow down and smell the roses, or smiles, not miles. Like the idea that like if you're hiking fast, you're missing out on like everything great. You're you're having a bad experience. You're having having a lessened experience if you aren't if you aren't going slow and smell you know smelling the roses, if you will, or um, and then smiles, not miles is kind of the other like way that people kind of say this, like in a through hiking context yeah. is, like, or a long distance hiking t- context of like, yeah, you're supposed to be having fun and doing, you know, whatever, like you're supposed to be, you know, kind of gallivanting through the woods and having a grand old time, not trying to crank out miles. Um, and this is something I think that we kind of talked about where you were saying, um, that you like having the goal of trying to finish. And you like, uh, I don't know, for her, I, I guess to speak for her, I won't speak for you because you're here. You can speak for you. But um, she, I mean, for her, she likes having that goal and she likes ha- trying to have to push push herself, right? She enjoys the the, the challenge of it, right? Um, and if she were to hike five miles every day and spend every day, you know, in every creek she stopped at, she would sit there for three hours and, you know, listen to the sound of a babbling brook. Um, <laughs> I think she would go like insane, literally. Yeah. Like, she wouldn't be interested in hiking. She likes trying to optimize how far she's going, how fast she's going, the gear she's going to bring to allow her to hike, uh, the cal, you know, the caloric density of her food. So that, it, it, you know, it's all like, she loves the challenge and the, 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 you know, trying to go far every single day. And like, and she, I think she loves the sense of accomplishment and feeling strong when she does hit those goals, right? Like setting a lofty goal and achieving it. And it's, it's hard to set a lofty goal of like how much fun, how much enjoyment did I have today? You know, like, it's like, it's just, it's kind of a, it's a more abstract and more difficult. It's not really a goal. It's like, it's kind of a difficult goal to be like, Oh yeah. I, I, I spent like so many hours next to underneath a nice tree today. Like it's, I don't know. That's kind of a weird, I mean, I guess maybe some people would have that goal, but for her, that kind of goal would not work. So yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. So I think it all, it, it all depends on how you frame the piece of advice. And so based on the way you framed it there, it was kind of like, Oh, like the the idea that you have to smell the roses like isn't necessarily true, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah I guess that's what it would be. It's like so. I, I like someone sees you going fast, or they hear how far you've gone, and they're like, "You need to slow down and smell the roses," as if like the the style you're hiking in isn't it is isn't enjoyable, and that it could you you would enjoy yourself more if you were to slow down. Like they're telling you this is how you're going to enjoy yourself more. So I I I, I agree with that for sure. Ju- and I would, ag- and the reason isn't because I think that hiking fast is the superior way of hiking. The reason is because at the end of the day, it's up to the individual to decide what style they like better, right? And so I would agree yeah. with, I would, I would say it's wrong to say that like, oh, like you, you have to slow down to smell the roses. I would say that's wrong just as much as I would say like, oh, you have to hike fast is wrong, you know, because yeah. it's just, yep. it's just up to the individual. But on the point of like. People saying that you have to smell down, smell the ro- smell down, and slow the roses. <laughs> yeah, on that smell point, down. <laughs> I think that's silly. Um, and and it, it kind of irks me when people say this. I feel like people say this more often, by the way, than people say like, "Oh, like you're hiking too slow. Like you have to hike fast." Just to be clear, but um, but yeah, for some people that's fun. 
like to go fast like that. I, I don't think I go as far as Jessica in that I'm not calculating the caloric density of everything and like I don't have a ton of spreadsheets and all this and that, but kind of like a you ton. alluded to, I have like a You've lighter got pack. Some. Okay, I've got a lighter pack. That's it. Um, <laughs> you know, kind of like you alluded to. It's for me. Yeah, I think the challenge of it is a big part of of through hiking yeah. for me. I like going fast. There's satisfaction that comes at the end of the day when you've done a really big day. Um, and so, yeah, I, I like that. And I think that people who insist that it's more fun to hike slow, it's like, well, yeah, for you it is, but they don't understand for other people that they're, like I said, there's satisfaction that comes with the challenge of it. And so that's, that's super silly to suggest that objectively one way of hiking is better than the other, you know? So that is, yeah. that is certainly bad advice. I don't know. You, you talked a lot about Jessica's perspective there, but do you have any specific thoughts on this Baker? I think I generally, well, I, I think I generally agree. Um, it's a spectrum, right? Like I don't, I don't know. There are some, so it depends on what the objective of the hike is. It, if it's, if it's the kind of hike where I'm not, if, if the goal is not, if I'm going to be doing things other than walking, I'll do like maybe camping is a bigger aspect of it. Like, I don't know. I never go on hikes like this. So I'm just saying like, it's rare that this is the case, but I would generally agree. I like, I also like pushing myself. Um, I like days that have big miles and lots of elevation gain. Like that's, I, I, I enjoy that kind of, that kind of day. But I will also say that when I've been injured, I'm not, when I, and I'm not able to do like to not to do that, to, you know, push myself in the way I would like to um, without causing myself pain or damage. Then my secondary goal is like, okay, I will slow down and smell the roses. First of all, cause I kind of have to, because like, I, I can't, I just can't push myself the way I'd want to in, in some sort of ideal world where my body can handle the, the amount of stress that I want to put on it. Um, if I can't do that, then slowing down, smelling the roses, like I'm going to do that. If I'm going to try to hike, like I, you have to, I have to tell myself to do that because otherwise it's going to be unenjoyable. Like if I'm just going to be you know, hiking a little bit and then I'm stopping earlier than I would want to for the sake of like, you know, not injure myself and then just sitting there fuming that I can't hike further. Like, I'm not going to do that. Um, in that case, I'm going to tell myself like, yeah, like this, this isn't about pushing myself. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, there are other aspects of this experience that I can enjoy that don't include that are, are not contingent upon how far I can hike in a day, you know? So I guess I would say, but I, I would say in general, you know, in a perfect ideal world where I didn't get like overuse injuries, like for, for sure, pushing myself would be like, that's, that's definitely my top thing. Like I, I definitely love doing that, but in the times when I can't do that, um, I do, I actually do kind of tell myself to do that. I don't know if I exactly tell myself to s slow down smell the roses, but I do tell myself to like, I don't need to rush right now. I should try to enjoy other aspects of being out here in nature, um, other than just, you know, uh, pushing myself to my physical limits. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, I think that's going to do it. So Baker, thank you for coming on. We'll have to do another one soon. I'm sure we will. And uh, thank you Absolutely. for listening, everybody. And uh, yeah, a huge thank you to Rose for editing as well. And um, any closing thoughts, Baker? Uh, I, I did get a message on Instagram from someone who oh. said, that they enjoyed the podcast a lot and that they are, um, we've inspired them to do the AT next year. Oh, so that's super cool. Be, it is cool. You're inspiring cool. people, Baker. Well, first they started by, um, th their first message was basically talking about how you're a bad podcast host and I should take over the show. And Reasonable. I was like, wow, that's a little rough. Like it's, it's a hard job. And then they were like, I'm kidding. I was like, oh, okay. It's hard to tell <laughs> sarcasm over. <laughs> a text medium and I don't know you, but I was like, dang, this person's coming out hot, but no, they actually were just, they're making, um, oh, okay. yeah, it, was, it was pretty funny. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I see this was a joke and I missed it, but yeah, no, they, uh, they said that, uh, the podcast has gotten them through some tough times and that they even, it's kind of helped them out and that they are, um, the goal of ha having the goal of the AT has been pretty uplifting for them and they're really excited to do it next year. So, um, I'm not going to mention their name cause I don't, they didn't say like, I want to be called out, but either way, best of luck to them. Yeah, yeah best of luck, hike. best of luck, mystery person. That's super cool to hear. That's that's definitely one of the cooler uh, messages I've heard. Um, super cool. So, yeah, yeah, it was best cool. of luck. It's like a, I, I don't get many Instagram messages anymore because I don't plug my my defunct um, <laughs> account, but I, I check occasionally 
just because I, for this kind of situation, I don't want to leave people. I don't like ghost people, but, uh, yeah, this, I was like, glad I looked cause I didn't want to like leave this. And they still had to wait like five days until I replied, but that's pretty good. That's like <laughs> that's more than, bad. that's a less than like a week. So that's pretty good. I routinely reply to DMS that are like a month old. <laughs> well, so. you get a lot, I'm sure though. So yeah, I got we'll quite a bit. Dip. You're a busy man. Yeah, I am a busy man. All right, that's going to do it. Thank you, Baker, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Take care. We'll see you next week. Bye.